Hi everyone, I'm Grzegorz Dudek from Częstochowa University of Technology, Poland. I'm very excited to share with you the results of my research on data-driven randomized learning of feedforward neural networks. After a short introduction, I will present feedforward neural networks with random hidden nodes and how to generate random parameters. Then I will describe uh, the proposed approach. I will present results of some simulations and I'll conclude the work. In learning of uh, fit for neural networks, we encounter many problems such as uh, sensitivity of the gradient descent algorithms to the flat regions, subtle points and local minima of the error function, time-consuming training for complex target functions, big data and many neurons and layers, and vanishing and exploding gradients in deep learning. In randomized learning, the gradient descent methods are not used. Hidden nodes parameters are randomly selected and stay fixed. Only the output weights are trained. The optimization problem becomes convex and can be solved using a standard linear least squares. It was proven that when the random parameters are selected from a symmetric uh, interval, according to any continuous sampling distribution, the network is a universal approximator. But the problem with selection of the appropriate interval for parameters has not yet been solved and is considered to be one of the most important research gaps in this field. In many practical applications, this interval is set as minus one, one, without any justification, regardless of the problem type, data, and activation function shape. Some works have shown that such an interval is misleading because uh, the network is unable to model nonlinear maps, no matter how many training samples are provided or what size networks are used. So the optimization of this interval is recommended for a specified task. Some researchers use also unsupervised pre-training using autoencoders to generate hidden node parameters. In this work, uh, we don't select the hidden node parameters from specified intervals. Instead, we propose to adjust them to the local features of the target function. A single hidden layer fit for a neural network with single output is considered with randomly generated weights A and biases B with M hidden nodes activation functions H, and output weights beta. The training set is phi. In the first step, we generate randomly weights A and biases B for each hidden node, typically from uniform distribution and some intervals, in many cases from the same symmetrical interval for both A and B. Then we compute the hidden layer's output matrix H. Uh, this is outputs of each hidden node for each training sample. H of X uh, is an activation function. One of the most popular is a sigmoid. And in the third step, we calculate output weights beta using the Moore-Penrose generalized inverse of matrix H. As a result, weights beta minimize the fitting error. This is square error. It is possible also to introduce L2 regularization here, but I don't use it in this study. The network represents the function phi. As you can see, this is the linear combination of sigmoids. Generating random parameters. Let's start from the meaning of the sigmoid parameters. We focus on sigmoidal activation function in this study. The two parameters have different meaning. A controls uh, the sigmoid slope. A larger value of A gives a steeper sigmoid. And B controls the sigmoid shift along the x-axis. Let's look at an example of fitting of one variable function using single hidden layer perceptron, which is uh, trained traditionally using gradient descent method. The middle panel shows the sigmoids which parameters were adjusted by the gradient learning algorithm. The sigmoids are combined linearly. The lower panel shows sigmoids multiplied by the output weights beta. The sum of these functions gives the fitted curve, a red line in the upper panel. Note that all sigmoids have the most steepest fragments, which are around the inflection points, inside the input interval shown as a gray field. 
This gives the perfect fitting. And now let's look at the results uh, for randomized network when weights and biases are selected from the fixed interval minus one, one. For such weights A, we obtain two flat sigmoids. Many sigmoids have the inflection points outside the input interval. The steepest fragment don't correspond to the steep fragments of the target function. As a result, they can't be combined to obtain the target function. Even when we increase the number of hidden nodes to several hundreds or even thousands. Fitting improves when we optimize the interval for the random parameters. For the interval minus 10, 10, the sigmoids are steeper and are able to fit the target function. But note that the many sigmoids have the steepest fragments outside the input interval, having the saturated parts in it. They don't build the fitted curve and are useless, can be removed. So this method produces many sigmoids which are wasted. RS method proposed recently doesn't have these drawbacks. It first selects randomly the sum of weights from the interval depending on R and S hyperparameters, then calculates weights on the basis of this sum and random numbers. Finally, biases B are determined on the basis of weights and randomly selected points X from the input hypercube. As a result, we have all sigmoids inside the input hypercube. Parameters R and S uh, determine the slope range of the sigmoids. They are selected in cross-validation to adjust the sigmoid slopes to the target function complexity. Details you can find in this paper. Another recently proposed method is a method of random slope angle, rotation and shift of the sigmoids. It selects uh, slope angles of the sigmoids inside the range alpha min and alpha max. These are two hyperparameters adjusted to the target function. Then it randomly rotates the sigmoids around the y-axis. And finally, it shifts them into the input hypercube. Details in this work. And now the proposed method. The idea is as follows. For each hidden node, select randomly training point x asterisk. Fit the hyperplane to the neighborhood of this point. And then calculate sigmoid weights and biases based on the hyperplane coefficients and points x asterisk. This is visualized in the figure. We select training point and its neighborhood. Then we fit the stride line to these points and construct a sigmoid which has the same slope in its inflection point as the line. We repeat this for other points. As a result, we obtain a set of sigmoids which represent the local features of the target function. Details. First, select point X asterisk and its K nearest neighbors. This is set C. Second, fit the hyperplane to the set C of the form. And first step, set sigmoid S in such a way that one of its inflection points, P, is in X asterisk. So the value of the sigmoid in X asterisk is 0, 5. Uh, additionally, hyperplane T is tangent to sigmoid S in P. It means that partial derivative of S in X asterisk with respect to X, J, is the same as the hyperprint coefficient a j prime. After substituting for h of x asterisk 0, 5, we obtain equation for weights a. And step 4. Directly from equation marked with an asterisk, we obtain equation for bias b. Bias is dependent on the weights and randomly selected training point. Parameter k, which should be not less than n, that is number of independent variables, controls the model generalization. And the algorithm. Number of hidden nodes m, number of neighbors k, and the training set phi as inputs, weights and biases of hidden nodes as output. And the procedure which I've just discussed. 
The complexity of this procedure. The first component is the complexity of the linear least squares regression for hyperplane fitting. And the second component corresponds to the selection of the nearest neighbors. And let's return to our example. Note that when data-driven method is used, uh, the sigmoids are distributed inside the input interval and the slopes correspond to the target function local fluctuations. And now some experimental results. In the first experiment, we analyze how the noise disturbing data affects hyperparameters. We consider two variable target function. Target values are distorted by adding the uniform noise distributed in interval minus c, c. The noise level c changed from 0 to 1. Testing set represents the target function without noise. The figure shows uh, the target function and training points for two noise levels. Results for different number of nearest neighbors. The optimal neighborhood size was 20 for the lower noise levels, C below 0 0.5, and 30 for the higher noise levels, C above 0 0.5. The model tends to overfit for the lower than the optimal value of K, and for higher values it tends to underfit. In the next step for each noise level, we change the number of hidden nodes, keeping k equal to 20. The optimal node numbers were 250 in the broad range of noise level, c below 0, 8, 200 for c equal to 0, 8 or 0, 9, and 50 for c equal to 1. We can observe that when the noise level is small, the underestimation of both hyperparameters k and m is more disadvantageous than overestimation in terms of uh, the error. In the next experiment, we compare the results of the proposed method with the comparative methods that I mentioned earlier. They are listed in this slide with the hyperparameters. We tested the methods on the three regression problems two-dimensional function with noise level c equal to 0, 2, daily stock prices data, and realistic simulation of the forward dynamics of robot arm data. Grid search and tenfold cross-validation were used for hyperparameters selection. Results for two-variable function. As you can see, both standard methods, FIM and OIM, failed completely. Data-driven method needs the smallest number of nodes to get the best performance when compared to other methods. And results for stock and kin 8 and M data. Also in this case, data-driven method outperforms other methods. The table shows the mean error and the optimal hyperparameters of the methods. Data-driven method demonstrates the best performance compared to other methods. Conclusion Randomized learning ensures fast training. This is because the optimization problem changes from non-convex to convex. The key issue in randomized learning is the way of generation of the hidden node parameters. Because weights and biases have different meaning, they can't be generated from the same interval. The proposed method treats weights and biases separately, taking into account local features of the target function. This improves the model performance in regression tasks. Next steps, comparison data-driven method with autoencoder-based methods, and constructive approach for data-driven randomized learning where the network is built iteratively by adding new hidden nodes generated according to a data-driven method. They are accepted or not depending on they reduce the error above the threshold. See details in this work. Thank you very much for your attention.